uh, I wanted to chat a little bit about professional skills and then sort of the future proofing, you know, the future proofing concept and, you know, how, how much in danger, like is the professional endangered? So Donald predominantly works or is working at the moment is working for a bank. So it's quite a good quite a good indication you're in a really good space to give us some indication about you know are we an endangered species as professionals because the computers are taking over <laughs> yeah. are we going to be jobless in five yeah. years here yeah. in five years you you're certainly going to have a different job to the one you have now that's for sure i think the the computers are taking over and i work within group it and Although I'm an IT specialist myself, I focus on the people side yeah. of, of things. But yeah, we are making every effort to get rid of the menial tasks, um, the things that don't inspire people, that don't okay. allow human beings to thrive. Um, you know, for example, every morning uh, we claims a department where they have to manually work between three systems and physically match up balances between the three, look up phone numbers, check the, the names of individuals. It's reconciling information. That's not something that inspires those people. No. It doesn't get them up in the morning, um, but it's an essential part of the, the day. But it also happens to be something that a computer can do. So easily, or easily automatable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And but then they're going to be jobless, right? No, they won't. In that case, they're not jobless. That just removes that painful task. Yeah. What what could happen is the number of people you need then can be reduced. Right. Um, but in the process, you need to be developing those people. Yeah. And helping them develop a view for themselves. It's not just the bank's responsibility to develop you. We could we could help give you an idea of where things might be trending towards. Yeah. And you certainly should be growing yourself and participating in that growth process. But, so we talk a lot about growth and development, you know, but what, what types of skills are we talking about? I mean, beyond specialisms like IT and, and accounting, and what, like what type of development are we talking about? What's going to save you? Because information is so easily transferable, yeah. and because you're competing with the rest of the globe, um, and a lot of your competition is not based on your location, uh, you have to you have to become a so-called T-based person. So you need you need some kind of depth yeah. in an area. Certainly right. needs a speciality, and then you need to get wider. Right. You need to expand your breadth. Okay. Um, but the so it's more, sorry, it's more it's the jack of all trades rather than the master specialism. No, you you need like a specialism, but you sure. also need to spread that out so that you have more skills and you're not just I do. You need to get wider. And I would say specifically, if you have a technical skill, um, that alone is not going to carry you in, and sustain you. Yeah. Um, where, where the probably the competitive, competitive advantage lies is where you can find, so take your technical skill yeah. and overlap it with strong business acumen. Yeah. If we think of a Venn diagram. And, right, then, right. and then the third ingredient which is the magic, I the think, magic. for the future that's going to keep you alive. And something that computers find incredibly difficult to do and mimic is, is creativity or artistry or artistic value. Innovation. Uh, some kind of, um, something that brings a perspective on a, on a particular situation. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be visual arts or no, no, no. arts. But a new, yeah, I think the moment we talk the about creative, creative accountants, everyone gets... <laughs> <laughs> For good reason. No one wants a creative accountant. But I think I, I, I agree with you over the years that, you know, over the years that I've developed my, my professional career and, you know, all the twists and turns that I've taken, um, hey, presto, it turns out that I am creative in a completely oh, non-dodgy way. <laughs> <laughs> let's 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 call it innovative. That's a better. Word. Let's call yeah. it innovative. Um, and I, I agree with you. Is the most you know increasingly the value is taking information 
taking processes, taking stuff that happens and finding better ways to do it, uh, great ways to do it, uh, more consumer effective, better for the user, better for and better for the people employee, that you're, whatever. you're working with. Yeah. So as an accountant, for example, um, something we, we've experimented with in the bank um, is having our accountants, accounting partners actually sit with the areas that they serve. So oh, they would sit on the yeah. ninth, ninth story of the building all yeah. together, uh, doing who knows what. Okay? We, <laughs> Not we, being creative. And it was one of the areas you had to kind of scan into to get into the area because of you know, so, the work was so very scary. scary. Yeah. And then they changed it up and said, okay, how about you sit with the area you sit? Yeah. And that has actually brought about a very interesting mm -hmm. shift in yeah, the approach I'd to that. Yeah, yeah. And the visibility That's of true. what's going on. I think from the accountant's perspective, I really like that, and I, we've experienced that you know, further in business once you get out of the audit firms and once you get out of an accounting firm, is that classically an accountant, in a lot of cases, doesn't have a lot of respect for other departments. Yeah. It's you know, operations is like uh, and marketing and like what do they do? Um, so putting them in there and kind of going, you, you're, you are, you, as an accountant, you're serving that, you know, you're serving that department. The accountants don't make the money. That's not the core of the business. The operation is the core of the business. That's sure. what makes the money and you're there to serve them. Um, and I think what I, what I struggle with, with, uh, with a lot of my students is to try and get them to understand that the value that they have is in translating information. You know, we speak accountant, mm -hmm. and we speak accounting, and we speak finance, but the guy in operations who is making decisions to run the business to actually make money needs to understand that information, how it relates to him, how it relates to their decisions, how it relates to what she needs to do. Um, and the better that you can communicate that, translate, interpret, um, and help them make decisions, the better. So your technical calculations, nobody really cares about, quite frankly. Well, not well, really cares yeah. about. But that's 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 more of a hygiene thing, right? So yeah. It's, it's the basics you've got to get right. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's always very important to separate what's hygiene and what's motivational. Yeah. Or what's foundational or basics. Yeah. The stuff we don't compromise on. Obviously, you want highly qualified, accurate, effective. Yeah. That's a basic. You know, that's, that's a, a basic. That's a given. Um, but a an account of that it could actually inspire people to participate in the business yeah. is, is something different. So is imagine that something you know, that you don't find very regularly at the moment. No, but we're starting to see something. So taking an accountant and putting them in the area they work, and then helping that area understand whether they're a profit center or a yeah. cost center. Yeah. But helping them understand that you are almost a little business in, in yourself. Yes. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. Because we're talking about, I mean, a, a, a typical business unit can cost, well, you know, 1.3 billion rand, you mm -hmm. know, in, in, in kind of corporate size. And, you know, their operating expenditure, etc. So it's big money. It's not small money. Yeah. And doing something as simple as visually... You know, not sticking it away or hiding it into in, behind Excel spreadsheets, but actually putting up a whiteboard and putting the figures down, uh, maybe showing what the jaws are in that particular area, and walking then people through walking it. people yeah. through that, having them actually stand and and, and participate in that, and saying, look, our, our current operating expense yeah. is fifty one percent. Our goal is to get it below fifty. And then actually people getting to see how that's moving down. And then, the, yeah, everyone takes ownership yeah. of, of the situation.